Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about something important that's disrupting the real estate industry as we know it. The lawsuit alleges that NAR and others have violated antitrust laws by conspiring to restrict competition in the real estate market, particularly regarding commission rates and the use of online platforms. We call those MLS system and it's a system used basically across the country to advertise current homes for sale on the market. So there are different MLSs depending on what state you live in and what area in that state. Just remember as I talk about this issue that I'm not a lawyer and if you find that I say anything that is contrary to what you think or what you've heard, please make sure you let me know. This is basically information that I've gathered from my company EXP and of course the internet where I go for, for all my information. Basically, what's happening here? Today I will go over the main points that I have been able to decipher while admitting that I decided to make this video just so I could understand what is going on for myself. Although NAR agreed to pay 418 million down from one point, I think it was 8 billion, there are still other lawsuits that are outstanding and yet to be resolved. Overall, it's kind of confusing for real estate brokers and especially for our customers. As part of the settlement, NAR did not admit any wrongdoing in this case. Myself will not discuss the merits or non-merits of this case as we could be here for a couple of hours. I will simply say that a couple of home sellers in Illinois, Missouri, and I mean a few, like maybe one or three, out of the millions of homes sold over the past few years, claimed back in 2019 that the commission they paid to their selling broker of their house was non-negotiable or too high. They also complained that it was also unfair that they had to pay the buyer's agent commission, completely forgetting that they received the same benefit as a buyer when they purchased a new home. Incidentally, the law firm who handled the lawsuit will receive approximately 35% of the money won by the plaintiff because, get this, a lawyer's fee is a standard 33 plus in these kinds of cases. Who says? Who price fixed their commission and fees? But real estate brokers have been price fixing the amount of their commissions anywhere from 1 to 6%. Incidentally, the 1% commissioner of realtors, the 1 and 2%, they usually discount brokers. And as you would expect, you would get the discount services you signed up for. That means in Brooklyn and New York City, it may take a year to sell and close on your property. And if there's a problem midway, watch out. I don't know if you have ever bought or sold a home, but when they say realtors ensure a smooth closing, it is so true. We do so much behind the scenes that now everyone thinks our job is about visiting a few homes and then closing day. Just showing up to get together, you know, we're gonna sign a few forms, shake some hands, I'm gonna collect a check, and that's what everyone sees in the ads and in the HTV glamorous property shows. No, I don't think they even show you picking up the check. But when I say hiring a realtor ensures a smooth closing, we are talking especially about that period after the contract has been signed and the real nitty gritty of the transaction begins. That can take anywhere from 30 days to two, three months here in the city. My last sale and purchase in Queens between two neighbors took nine months to close. No kidding. And guess who was keeping all the balls in the air during that time? Yours truly. By the way, the escrow period which starts when the bank says it will issue a loan or, or mortgage for your sale until the property is actually transferred to the new buyer. This is when the property inspectors, the loan originators, mortgagees, appraisers, the title company, the lawyers, you know, there's so many people be involved behind the scenes, but this is a time when everybody spends dissecting the house, the past owners, to make sure everything is legal, that the house is actually worth the money that the buyer is paying for it. Is it safe? Is it zoned correctly? These are all the things that go on behind the scene 
that we handle. A lot of people don't see this, but that is what we do to earn our commissions. So it's usually falls on the buyer's agent to kind of coordinate all of this. And in the new NAR provisions, buyers will now have to pay for their own buyer's broker. Before it was included in the, the seller's commission was that basically it was approximately half went to the seller, half went to the buyer's broker, but now it's going to be the buyers themselves who will be responsible for paying for their own agent to maneuver the um, sale of their home. You know, that's what I'm most upset at with this whole thing because especially first time home buyers have so many challenges coming up with the down payment for the home, the closing costs, but this is what we're still navigating. Many will say I am prone to conspiracy theories, but by not requiring the seller's agent to pay the buyer's agent fee, it's encouraging the sale of homes, but not the purchase of homes. To me, this along with the common media themes that, you know, renting is cheaper than owning, long term, you know that's not true, but it seems to me an attack on the only asset that the middle class comfortably has, which enables them to create generational wealth for their children and grandchildren. If we don't have a home to leave, then what else do we have? My guiding belief in what I do every day is transforming lives with property ownership, because that's exactly what happens. When families own a home, their lives are transformed. So I think it's very important to protect our assets and to make it easier for people to buy homes and not more difficult. Now that I've gotten my rant off, <laughs> I'll go more into the, the ramifications moving forward. Some of the new rules required are already in use across other areas in the country. For instance, requiring a written and signed agreement before a buyer's agent can work with any new clients who is looking for a home and whom we will become the buyer's agent. This rule is now universal in all of the states, including Brooklyn and New York folks. There are going to be changes to industry practices. Co-op compensation between buyer and selling agent will no longer be posted on the MLS. You know that registry that advertises all the home for sale? You can no longer post the commissions there, but it must be listed in the contract between the buyer and the seller. So going forward, no compensation information on the MLS publicly, but once the contract is drawn up between the buyer and the seller, that will contain how the buyer's broker will get paid. That document, you have to include it in there. And the buyers moving forward will have to complete and sign an agreement between themselves and the buyer's agent as to the services they're going to receive and the fact that they are going to be responsible for the payment. I think that's the biggest advantage in this whole NAR lawsuit. There will be increased transparency in commission rates and fees, giving our buyer and seller clients more insight into the total cost associated with them purchasing or selling a home. There will be the potential for lower cost. With more competition and transparency, there's a possibility that commission rates, hence home prices, could decrease. This one I really disagree with because, let's face it, whenever there are major changes, there are upsides and downsides. And I don't think this is going to be an upside. Listen, the reason why home prices are high, it's not because of agents and brokers commission rates. It's simply because there are more people looking for homes than there are homes on the market to be sold. Supply and demand, supply and demand has nothing to do with real, real estate brokers and their commissions, okay? So that one I think is really reaching because until we have more homes for sale on the market than people looking for homes, prices are gonna be elevated. As real estate professionals, 
here at EXP, we intend to stay informed about any new developments in the lawsuit, and we will be prepared to adapt to any changes that may come along. My personal mission is transforming lives with real estate. You know, I can't think of any other asset that we can acquire easily that will make a lasting impact on our future generations. And that's my goal. And my intention is to continue helping my buyers and sellers, regardless of what rules there are in NAR, because that's just my mission. Till the next time.